Hello everybody, welcome to another build order tutorial. This time we're going to be looking at a PVZ build, Protoss vs. Zerg. Um, it is the new twist on the very, uh, at this point, old build that is the DT drop. In this version, which is becoming a lot more popular lately, you're going to be getting two warp prisms, double drop all the way, while mackering. So let's get into it. Put a pylon at the front. Go to gateway. Get your gas. Put one probe into the gas and then rally the other two into it. a 19 Nexus. Seven X core and then scout with that probe. Get your second assimilator. Pylon. Put all three probes into that newly finished gas. Start an adept, chrono it, and start warp gate. Get a Twilight Council. Start rattling your production of probes to your Nexus, your natural. Put that Adept in the hole in the wall, then get a Stalker. Build a robo. Look for overlords of the stalker. Crony your nexus again. Build a dark shrine. Get two gateways. Make sure not to get supply blocked from here on out. Get two assimilators at your natural. Start building a war prism and chrono it. Fill your gas geysers. Build a second warp prism. Change your gateways into warp gates. Warp 
Warp in three Dark Templars with that Warp Prism. Build an Observer. Build your Nexus at your third. Warp in Adepts with your second Warp Prism. Get a Mothership Core and start building an Immortal. You have consistent Immortal production from here on out. Warp in a fourth DT. Turn them into Archons. This is assuming that you kept all your Dark Templar alive. Start charge from your Twilight Council and get two forges. So do as I say, not as you see or whatever. I messed it up here. Get a second Robo. Start warping in Zealots whenever you can. And then macro from here on out. Let's go to the build discussion. So for the strengths of this build, it is very strong in the current meta, so that's important to you that you're doing a good build or that you're on the you know, very edge of the current meta, then, then this is great for you. Uh, it can surprise your opponents uh, in really all leagues, I suppose, but really uh, most are going to be used to scratching Dark Shrine drops, so for the lower leagues, it can actually surprise your opponent. Uh, it's a good macro build, so this is actually a really, really good build to learn from if you're just learning Protoss. Um, well, if you've if you're learning how to macro well as Protoss, actually, I'll get to that later. Uh, provides excellent harassment options, obviously with two War Prisms, that's a given. Uh, it can snowball, so if you keep everything alive, if you really start doing a lot of damage, and you have this like really smooth follow-up, then it can look really nice. Um, sometimes insta wins, so again, like sometimes in the lower leagues, they're not going to be expecting Dark Templar, because they're just not going to scout at all. And that can just get you an instant win. Uh, although sometimes it does happen in professional games as well. Uh, it gives you decent scouting with two War Prisms. So as long as you're using them, you will be also scouting. And combined with good technical skill is a great overall build. So that's kind of the um, part I was going to talk about later. So the weaknesses. Uh, no Mother's Core at the beginning can be an early game weakness. Uh, really an early game weakness, so be very careful. Scouting a map control is not a given. You must control units correctly and constantly. Uh, it requires very good technical skill. Not suggested for beginners. So kind of taking back my statement earlier about a uh, good macro build for learning Protoss, that's not exactly true. You should have the basic foundation of Protoss and be decent at the game before you really are going to expect to get the most out of this build. And uh, lastly, if no pressure is applied to your opponent, it can be a very, very weak build. Alright, things you should know about the build. So, of course, as a Protoss player, place pylons around the base in early to mid game to detect Overlord drops. Didn't really do this here because you are uh, kind of like consistently expanding, but that is a general rule of thumb. If your DTs are scouted or unable to do damage, save them with the War Prism and merge them into Archons. Uh, this is pretty well known for Protosses all, all over as well. Um, they can kill units that are grouped up to defend, uh, like uh, grouped up lings, grouped up roaches, or queens, actually. Queen snipes are very good. Uh, as well as mineral lines, when drones stack. That requires going a little bit deeper, and maybe you don't want to do that. It's a little bit unsafe, but it can happen. Um, Archons can also be paired up with the main army a bit later on if you keep them alive. An earlier Mothership Core can be built if your probe scouts anything suspicious. I mean, this militia core was pretty darn late, so if you see anything at all suspicious, like no natural, obviously, but even like a late third, or there's a lot of units running towards you with your war prism, uh, then definitely make the militia core. Uh, the stalker can deny overlords from scouting the build, but if they can't, may still be able to deny the scouting of the second war prism. So, uh, to elaborate a little bit more on this, generally, Zerg's gonna scout your initial build just because it happened so early, right? They see a Twilight Council, they see a Robo, the Twilight Council isn't researching, they know what build it is, Zergs are having to deal with this every single day. 
But what they might not know is that it's going to be a second warp prism. That's really kind of the, the twist on this build. Um, but to be honest, even if they scout both, if they're like literally scouting the entire time because you never bought the makeup of a stalker, it might not actually matter. Like if your control is good and your macro is good and they don't try to do any surprising all ins, then it, it can still be a good opportunity to get a lot of harassment done. They can't be everywhere at once, but maybe you could. And of course, if you like this content, then consider following me on this YouTube channel, on Twitter, on Twitch, on Instagram, supporting my Patreon, uh, whatever. And also, go ahead and check out my other videos. Thanks for watching.